All right, so in this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna update this form. So when you click on it, uh, of course, this, this uh, field is required will still come up, uh, but it will look more like this with the error just right above it. Um, so let's actually go ahead and do that. Um, first thing that you wanna note is if you go into inspect element here, um, and we look at the actual HTML element for it, we'll see some things. First of all, you see the ID of ID underscore email. Um, so if we were using CSS or JavaScript, we could change um, how this looks or certain behaviors of it. Uh, but then also you see name equals to email. So name being email and type of email are important for this because that's actually what is gonna be sent through. Name equaling to emails specifically gonna be sent through to the database or to our backend, to Django. That's gonna know whether or not this field of being required is gonna actually be true. Like it's actually gonna send that field um, and it's not gonna run an error. So let's actually go ahead and do something here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of form as P and I'm gonna add a new one doing form.errors. So we can see all of the form errors that exist. And then I'll do input type equals to email. And I'll say name equals to email two for now. I'm just gonna call it email two so we can see what happens. So if I save it and do a refresh in here, and notice it says this field is required because I did a refresh. If I hit it again, it says this field is required. And it also is saying email. So email, this field is required. So the error is email, and then the actual error itself is this field is required. So if I do form.email.errors, I can refresh in here again, and now it says this field is required. And I know I can use this because it's really the only field uh, that I'm gonna be working with, right? So I know that that's the only field that's required, and I know that's the only one coming through. So if I do, if I actually add in an email address here, and hit join, it's still saying this field is required. Uh, that's because of how we named it, right? So this should be fairly obvious, but if I refresh again, let's go ahead and do coding for entrepreneurs, and now it actually takes me through. Um, so it's still running all the form validation stuff that the Django forms have, um, but all we did was just change the input type itself to match something we want more of, right? Which is this, we want it to look like this. Um, so to do this, we first off need to change this to having a class of form control. And now if I refresh, it now is this giant field, right? So looking at this field, it's not big. It's, it's actually a little bit smaller than that. So inside of our container, we'll do div class of column small, and I'll do, um, let's say six, and then column small, offset three, wrap that into there, do a refresh. Now it's a more manageable size for us. And we also might wanna put a placeholder. So placeholder equals to your email. All right, so there we go. Okay, so now we have a placeholder for it. And then we also wanna put that button actually in here. So class of form control, of course, is a bootstrap thing. So if we look at bootstrap, we see into our forms, we can see all of the different types of things that we can add into our form. So form control will make it go the entire length of the container that it's in. So uh, if it's a full row, it's gonna go the full row. If it's just a column, it'll go that column. Uh, so if we scroll down, we see like, inline uh, groups. So input group is actually the one we want. Input group is going to be how we're gonna actually put our button on this, on our um, our field. So in here we'll do input, or sorry, we'll call it div class input group. So div class input group, and then close off the div tag and refresh in here. Uh, well, it cuts it off and it's not actually how we want it to look. We want it to be um, a little bit cleaner. So we want the button to actually be inside of here, which it's not doing currently. And that's fairly easy to fix. All we just do is span class equals to input group dash btn. Close off that span. I'm gonna tab these in a little bit. 
and we'll do a refresh in here and there we go so now that's that button is actually right in there with it right so if we look at this we see that that button's there and uh, it's it's exactly the same pretty much so uh, another thing I want to do is actually add into the button so BTN primary and then BTN LG refresh so now I see that the buttons large and it's a different color uh, which is good but I also want to make sure that the form itself is just a little bit bigger right I don't want it to be small like this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into here and I'm gonna add a class to the form itself and call it form horizontal because that's technically how the form is right it's horizontal it's not vertical and then I'm going to tab all this stuff in inside of the form and I'll do a new div class of form dash group and then form group LG and then close off that div so this div is for that okay so now if I refresh in here I see that it changes the actual input size to being manageable and the button is also large so if I click on it it also now says field is required notice it's in as a list because it will be errors it's most multiple errors so that's okay for us we just would actually have to update it if we don't want it to be in a list element itself which is not that big of a deal um, so let's actually change the error to being a bootstrap error um, so if we go into our components and we look at alerts inside of our bootstrap components um, so we scroll down and go to alerts and we see let's just use this warning alert so I'm gonna actually gonna head, go ahead and copy this warning alert right here copy that bring it over paste it here so first off I'm gonna do if form dot email dot errors so if there are errors, let's just show the form. And if, and then for the errors in here, we will do a loop form. So for error in forms.errors, and if, and I will then add the error here. All right, so we go back in here, do a refresh, hit continue. Up, oh, needed to add, have the N4, not N if. So N4, refresh, continue. And now it's saying field is required. Uh, alert dot warning, so yellow works, or you could do danger, so for red, uh, if we wanted to have it being red. So this field is required is there. Or you could just, instead of it, because we know it's the email field, we can hard write in here saying email is required. Now, I know that that's what it is. As far as Django is concerned though, you probably are gonna wanna have this um, being uh, a custom error message. So there is a way to do a custom error message, which I'm not gonna get into in this one, uh, but th that's another way to do it. I know it's gonna be email and you would just say email is required or your email is required if there's an error if there's not an error of course if we just click on this um, and let it load on its own it's going to tell us that there is no error showing but I do see that there's a little curly bracket here so I'm gonna get rid of that all right so um, I'm also gonna have I'm gonna have both of the errors coming through just so you can see it as referenced later uh, if you ever need to look at it just just in case you actually have to see those errors themselves um, all right so that's the form that is actually customizing the form a little bit making it look a little bit closer to like how form should look um, as far as it's concerned with Django um, and also having that button come in there so it looks a lot more like this right here all right so that's that's pretty much it for this one um, so that's styling the form in a way that works out very well for us at least so it looks nice and um, the way it, the way it actually functions is how we want it to too all right so in the next one uh, we will actually add those sales things and then just kind of clean up the css a little bit more um, and then we will start to get into actually launching it all right see you then